In this video, we are going to be taking a look at workflows, which is a way that we allow users to build AI agents involving multiple different processes. Now, if you go over to your registry page, you are going to have a new tab that says workflows. Go ahead and click on that. And I already have two workflows set up that we're going to be taking a look at in just a bit. But before we hop into these examples, let's go ahead and create a new workflow just so we can learn about the basic building blocks of what workflow actually is. So once you click that, it's going to ask you for a name. I'm just going to name it sample workflow for this demo in here. What we're faced with is a blank canvas. So before we get to adding anything to our workflow, we'll just go over some of the basic concepts. Like I said, the first one is input variables. So similar to a prompt template, input variables are just any additional data that you want to provide to your workflow. Now this data is going to be processed later on, which we'll take a look at right now. So the processing of this data is done by the individual nodes. Now, if you right click anywhere on your canvas, you can add a new node and you can think of these nodes as different functions. So if you select this drop down menu right here, you're going to see the different node types. Of course, we have a prompt template node. This is going to be responsible for making an LLM call, getting some data back. We also have an endpoint node, which is if you want to send data to a separate microservice or any endpoint that you have spun up, then we can get the response from that. And we have a lot of different ones uh, as well for parsing JSON, uh, math operators for comparing values, so on and so forth. But essentially, the point is that these nodes are basically functions that take some input and process the data in some kind of way and produce an output. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can actually chain these different nodes together. So in this example, if node one wanted to process some data and then take that output and feed it into node two, you would set up a structure like this. And one other concept before we get to the examples is let me just go ahead and make this a valid node type. One, two, three, because I want to demonstrate one last key point, which is the concept of an output node. So for any of your nodes, you can go ahead and right click it and tag it is an output node. And what an output node means is that whenever you actually run this workflow in a production environment, what it's going to do is it's going to go through all of your processing and eventually generate a value for this output node. And this value that is generated is essentially like the final return statement or the final output that you're going to be pulling from your workflow. So now with those concepts in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at some examples. And the first one that we'll take a look at is this multi LLM aggregator. So I'm just going to go ahead and click this. And then I already have a couple of versions, but I'm going to go ahead and click go to workflow builder just so I can have this in kind of uh, draft mode. And what this is doing right here is I have this set up where I am using three prompt template nodes to make three LLM calls. And what it's going to do is it's going to take some input and I'll just say uh, prompt engineering tips. And I'm going to go ahead and save those. And then I'll go ahead and run this and I'll talk you through what's happening. So the idea behind this is that it's often useful instead of just taking your input and selling it, sending it to one LLM, it's often useful to send it to multiple different LLMs or multiple different models because they each have their different strengths. Now, instead of just taking one output and doing whatever you want with it, you can take outputs from multiple LLMs and aggregate them together, or you can have a final step that says, choose the best one, whatever you want to do based on your business logic. But this is a way that you can structure it. And in this case, as you can see, each of these produced an output, and then as the last step, what we did is we just aggregated them together. And this is what I have is my final output node. So there you go. Now, another example that I want to show you is a recommendation engine. So here, let me go ahead and pop this open. And what this structure is doing is generating a recipe recommendation for a given user. So the input for this, we have three pieces of information from the user, country, favorite food, and interest. So I'll say country, Italy. 
My favorite food, I'll say pasta. In my interests, I'll say chess and hiking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and save those. Now, what this workflow is going to do is for each of these inputs, it basically aligns with each of these branches. So this first branch at the top is going to be taking this country data and it's gonna be reaching out to a vector store to pull in relevant recipes that we're eventually gonna filter down and suggest the one to the user. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and kick this off and I'll talk through exactly in more detail what each step is doing. So before we make the query to the vector store, it's often useful to pre-process this data in some kind of way. So for example, right here, when I have my favorite food was pasta, you could just take pasta and use that in your query to the vector store, but it's often useful to do some pre-processing along the lines of lower casing it, getting some synonyms. However you wanna do your pre-processing before that query is ready, that's what this first step is doing. And then the second step is taking this data and using it to retrieve results from a vector store. That's what this step does. And then this last one is just filtering out any irrelevant results. And then all of these are feeding into this final prompt template node, which is just saying, here are my results from these three different branches, combine them together into a final uh, recommended recipe. And that's why it spit out this right here. And you can see again that this is my output node. So later on, whenever I use this in my production code, this is gonna be the value that it's gonna be pulling out. Now, one other feature that I wanna show is that in addition to running your entire workflow, which is gonna process every node, if you click this button, what you can also do is you can also rerun certain sections of your workflow by clicking this start here button. And then whenever I run this, you can see that this node reruns and also any nodes downstream from it. So just wanna point that out because if you are making some updates, you don't have to rerun the entire workflow every time. You can just rerun certain segments of that to help speed up your development process. So that is our feature. Hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you.